Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the group stages of the Jetto Cup. We have the two teams, Nuvi versus Fap, and we're just waiting for them to load. Okay, and here we are again. Uh, good evening, uh, and welcome to the group stages of the Jetto Cup. This is your caster for tonight, uh, Charles, and you have these two teams, Nuvi uh, versus Fap, or friends and Paulos, and null victory. So now, so now we're in our first. Uh, Banning phase and actually right now friends and Paulos has, has incurred a level three penalty, so they really don't have much time now for their for their times. And now null victory bans the bat rider, very potent off laner or possibly a mid hero, great uh in team fights and initiation. And now friends and Paulos turn to ban. They ban the alchemist, a a common pick uh, carry during these uh games and uh, his grievous greed en enables uh, them to f him to farm very well and now null victory bans the wisp uh, a support that has big impact once he reaches level 6 due to his uh, global presence and Renton Palos on the other hand bans the OD uh, a mid hero that tends to dominate if given the opportunity so now null victory picks the dark seer uh, off laner and usually the mech the mech uh, carrier for the team and uh, friends and palace on their hand goes for for the supports first and it's the jakiro he has long range initiation or counter initiation with that ice path and now they're going for their second pick now uh, what's nice about jakiro is that he can he combos well with other heroes like the shadow demon uh, or the leshrac or the naga siren Although the the thing with Ice Bat it's not instantaneous, but it does have a range. So now Friends and Paulos uh picks the Nyx Assassin. Uh not that great honestly in the at the early levels because uh his Im impale uh doesn't have uh, as much duration as you want it and he's he is a melee support, but once he reaches level six his vendetta can uh help hunt down stray heroes and uh gank gank them. So you really want these early levels on Nyx Assassin, but between the Nyx Jakiro and Nyx Assassin, Friends and Palos has the option to go offensive uh, try lane. And then now it's a null, null victory's turn to pick. They've uh, chosen the Lion. It's not a support we've seen uh, nowadays, mainly because Lion's uh, speed uh, isn't that fast. But he does have a lot of disables, the Earth Spike, the Hex. Uh, and of course, we have the Finger of Death, which does uh, a lot of damage. So now it's Null Victory's uh, turn to ban. And yeah, uh, because they did start on time, they have a lot of time to select who who they want to ban. Friends and Pals on their hand doesn't really have uh, much reserve time due to the penalty they incurred. Uh, actually, they could right now ban the course of Friends and Palos. They still don't have their mid hero or their off laner. And yeah, and speak of that, they banned the Weaver, a uh, very flexible hero. I mean, because of sh his Shikuchi, you can lane him in the off lane. But we, we also see him uh, in the safe lane because Weaver does need farm. And uh, rarely we also see him a uh, mid, and I think yeah, he could also do well there. So nice ban there from Null Victory. And now Friends and Palos just has 3 seconds left to pick their, to ban their. Uh, hero and uh, they ban the Rubik, he flexible support, and uh, most notably known for his ability to steal spells. And now Victory uh, bans the Lone Druid. Lone Druid, another core hero that that's flexible. You usually can see him in the off lane or in the safe lane. And he, and once he reaches level three or level four, you can always go jungle. Friends and Palos now goes for their fourth ban. They they ban the Gyrocopter. Uh, Carry that has uh, lots of team five capability, and of course, uh, it has to be said there's always the combination of the divine rapier on the gyrocopter. Uh, but uh, we won't be seeing that in this game. And now it's friends and Palos turn to pick. Yeah, they have to start revealing their strategy now as they pick one of their cores. They might actually go for their mid hero now. Uh, the pool's still open since they did ban uh, OD. I'm expecting maybe an int based mid hero like the Queen of Pain or the Pock. We've also seen uh, potentially the Timber. So okay, they picked the Dragonite, a uh, stable, stable hero, very tough. And when he gets a Shadow Blade, he can initiate w with that. We don't usually see him exactly winning the lane, but he'll he'll get uh, some last hits thanks to his uh, Dragon, uh, his Breath Fire 
once he gets his bottle and now null victory uh pixel life stealer uh definitely one of their cores uh most likely uh a safe lane although you've seen this life stealer sometimes go on the off lane since his rage enables him to not be ganked by opponent spells but uh with the darks here there this is most likely a safe lane life stealer and i think he they okay. want to give him a fast midas now it's friends and Palace turn to pick they have five seconds left to pick their hero uh this might be their off laner now yeah speaking of off laner yeah they go for the nature's prophet very very potent uh split pusher and of course he always has that global presence between teleport and nature wrath of nature he can participate in team fights so now null victory picks the less rock i think between him and the lion they have they have a lot of uh disables there only the problem with less rock is his split earth uh, has a delayed casting time so you you want the lion to initiate with the earth spike then followed by the less rock split earth and yeah this also has the offensive tri lane uh, potential now it's a friends and palace turn to ban and they ban, ban the puck now and now victory will, is should be looking to ban the uh, hard carry uh the, the anti-mage is always a threat uh lately we've seen uh teams pick the specter actually uh the phantom assassin uh yesterday we even saw a Sven pick so uh so that might be a hero they they want to ban and i think yeah it let's let's see now uh who who null victory will choose uh, but now they're digging into their reserve time yeah and actually right now the, the pool of carries is wide open and if you look at the bands of null victory uh, they've spent a lot of their bands actually on on potential carries the weaver the lone druid so right now the, uh they could even perhaps ban the tiny uh, we've even seen i think the tiny equation he played i'm not sure if in during here in the jetto cup uh, games Okay, and uh, if you want more info on the Jetto Cup, you can tune in to their Facebook page, facebook.com slash Jetto Cup, or their Tumblr page, uh, friendlydota.tumblr.com. And now they ban the Spectre. So Spectre has a global presence, and I think with the Nature's Prophet there, there's a combo there, uh, so it's a nice uh, ban. Now Friends and Pals is turn to pick. Again, I think, yeah, the anti mage is always there, especially for the split pushing capability. The question is if his... Uh, teammates can find him the time to farm they uh, they could also go for for this Sven more typical uh, and i think here they really need a hard carry i mean uh mistress prophet has good damage output but he's not very tough the dragonite i think is a uh, very tough okay so they pick a konka uh actually between them him and the dragonite i'm not sure which of these two will actually go in the mid lane uh and which one in the safe lane? I mean, they have both potential. And with Gonka, if he's farmed up, uh, uh, one lucky Tidebringer can can easily decimate Null, null Victory's uh, supports. So now it's Null Victory's turn to pick their mid hero. Uh, Queen of Pain's always a good mobile one and can combo with the Life Stealer. The Storm Spirit is a, also a good option. Again, there's a nice energy there with the Life Stealer. Uh, they can even perhaps even go like uh, Timbersaw for for their mid, and since you're most likely facing a mid melee hero that uh, either the Dragonite or the Konka, that might not be a bad idea. And if first comes to worst, if they don't pick a mid hero that has no synergy with the Life Stealer, I guess you can go for the Dark Seer Surge uh, combination. But I I really prefer a mobile mid hero here to combo with the Life Stealer. Uh, before I I norm I really want the puck, but since the puck has been banned, they might go for yeah the other heroes like the Queen of Pain. If they don't go for the Queen of Pain, I guess yeah they can always go for something like the Phantom Assassin. Okay, uh, strangely they go for a Razor, so that will I guess help against the Konka since he can negate a lot of the damage he deals, and also the same also can be said for the. Dragonite, although the Dragonite still has uh, his spells. Well, actually, Kunk also has his spells. It just negates a Tidebringer, but he really more of a combo uh, hero with Torrent, X marks the spot in the ghost ship. And with the uh, stuns, with the disables from Friends and Palos, uh, that's always a threat to contend with. And again, a good evening and thanks for watching. This is the 
Jetta Cup group stages and you're watching this competition between Friends and Paolo's and Null Victory. So now actually there's a disconnect from Friends and Paolo's so we might experience some delay here as they pick their heroes. Yeah and and okay there's a countdown there so we are expecting a pause here once the game starts. And okay so Here's the loadout screen. I'm not sure if uh, they'll they're looking to pause the game. Okay, so let me introduce the the heroes. On the radiant side, we have Sushi on the Razor, Suman on the Dark Seer, Shawarma on the Leshrac, Shomai on the Life Stealer, and Shopao on on the Lion. So. For the radiant side, for well, from Team Null Victory, we have some food-related names there. And on the dire side, we have follow Le follow Leboklek on the Konka, the Art of Joking on the Nature's Prophet, Hibachi on the Nyx Assassin, Manika on the Jakiro, and Pot Pot on the last hero. I guess yeah, he just has to pick the Dragon Knight. Pot pot on the Dragon Knight. Most likely, it looks like so far. I think this will be a defensive dry lane with the Konka and the Jakiro and the Nyx Assassin. So it will be a Dragon Knight mid. And if you're just watching this, uh, sorry, my stream isn't up. Usually, there's a problem with with the delay on Twitch TV, at least for for the software that I'm using. But uh, you can check it out on YouTube. I'll, I'll hopefully upload it. Uh, Later on, it's at uh, youtube.com slash users slash Charles A. Tantu. So, actually, you can see the previous games so far there. And now, Potpat has joined back, and now we're just waiting for him to pick the Dragon Knight. And, uh, okay, there, there he is. He's picked the Dragon Knight. And I think they can resume the game. And interesting here, on the side of Friends and Palos, they pick up an early Smoke of Deceit. So, this might be used to go into the enemy jungle and well I don't think they're going for a first turn Roshan and here here we are with the resumption of the game okay so Nature's Prophet uses his uh, Triant so I guess they'll be scouting And again, our, right now, I think Nuvi has, uh, I forgot if it's two or three wins. Well, Fap, Friends and Pauls, I think, uh, also not sure right now of their standings. Okay, so we have this uh, defensive uh, tri lane, the Nyx Assassin, and the uh, Konka, and the uh, Jakiro. And they'll be f facing off this off lane Darkseer. Then on mid, it's the Razor versus the Dragon Knight. And on the radiant side, we, uh, well, we have the we have these supports, the Leshrac and the Lion, uh, damaging the Trayan so that he can't st steal the rune or block the creep camps. And uh, yeah, their life stealer is their carry there. So let's see if this Nature's Prophet will be going to the jungle immediately. Yes, he's going to the looks like he's going to the jungle and won't be harassing uh, the lane. And now Dyer has planted uh, Observer Wards here, I guess to scout uh, the enemy, and they should see the Darks here, here now. <coughs> and Radiant has something uh, similar here. I think, yeah, this this gives vision up until the the rune spawn. Oh, actually, the Nisha's Prophet opts to go for uh, his lane. And he'll get scouted out and zoned out by this Slash Rack. And then in terms of mid, uh, looks like uh, the Kanka is actually leading in terms of uh, last hits. Oh, sorry. It's not a mid hero. Kanka is on top. Actually, just the Razor right now with one last hit. So both sides here having problems getting their last hits. The Dragon Knight is more on the Nanai. But now, uh, well, Razor just already has two last hits. Uh, and it's the Lifestealer if we're looking to see his charge now. And with his uh, 
this light with these supports on guarding him, I think he won't really have any problems. The question is whether this nature's prophet will find uh, his XP and actually he should turn off this ring of Basilius so that does not push the lane. This dark is already level two, and yeah, nature's prophet also hits level two now. So yeah, so so he's not actually getting zoned out. In fact, he's finding some XP here in this lane, but uh. But now Radiant's heroes are actually getting bulk of the farm. We have the Life Stealer and we have the Razor, dominating in last hits. And the thing with with Kongka is not really the hardest carry. I mean, he relies on his spells to do a lot of damage. You have that wombo combo. Uh, X marks the spot, for example, can set up the torrent into a boat. And uh, yeah, when you have the torrent and boat, you know that can also combo well with the Jakiro's uh, macro pyre. Or even uh, the stun of the last rock or his uh, ultimate. So now this razor secures the regeneration rune and uh, goes back to his uh, lane. So right now dominating the last hits actually the razor and ah sorry it's the life stealer and the razor actually drops off a bit. But uh, despite that you know this nature's prophet is getting X XP three levels worth of XP and this uh, dark Sir is not too far behind. So very passive game right now, uh, not much in terms of kills. And this Nature's Prophet has actually switched into the forest. I think he it's going to be a uh, slow me dust, but uh, it's better than nothing. And he did get that uh, XP uh, in the lane. And now this Razor is uh, sapping the strength of the Dragonite, but I don't think he can really dive it. It'll just help him uh, with his last hits and denies. And this, uh, no, he can't really go for a rune. It hasn't spawned yet yeah and there's now I think there's some rotations here from the radiant supports I think they're looking to set up a gank on the Dragonite and let's look at the skill bit of Razor I think it's possible with the plasma field uh, at level 2 and you have always the split earth and this uh, earth spike from the lion and now this nature's prophet I think is waiting for a good place to teleport to yeah, and uh, there's a creep pool here, or creep stack. No, it's just a creep pool. A failed creep pool by the next assassin. And now when they're speaking, will they make a go here? Uh, yeah, but the creeps, I think the creeps already gave vision of this Leshrac and Lion, but uh, and the Dragon Knight just backs off, and there's really nothing he can do to contest it. While this uh, Life Steer is getting some free farm, it's actually not... Uh, is he going for a Hand of Midas? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, he could... He could have bought the gloves now and but instead of just using his Quelling Blade to farm. So not necessarily a bad strategy. And this uh, Konkaki is uh, damaged now. I think the Dark Seer has been doing some harassment, especially with that uh, Iron Shell. And he's level 4. Well, there's Nature's Prophet. It's already, uh, well, still level 3. And just content to farm the jungle. So now it's Razor uh, sapping, the, sapping the Son of this Dragonite. Well, the damage and... Uh, Radiant supports just uh, rotate back into the jungle. I think right now they could, well, they could push, especially with Les Leshrac's uh, diabolic edict. But the creeps uh, take take some damage. But right now the alternative also is that radiant supports can can farm these uh, creep camps. I think it was a uh, fucking mad uh, of Quantic Gaming who said that uh, important. Uh, the important XP really is level 1 to 4 for the supports. Once you reach level 4, you know, farming those creep camps is not going to be that effective anymore. And uh, Radiant, yeah, gets that uh, tier 1 bottom tower. And they, they'll continue to push. Let's see if there's some rotation from the Dire or uh, whether Radiant will uh, push until this uh, tier 2. And actually, the Life Steer doesn't go for an early Midas instead, just farms his face boots. I was looking for uh, to fight early on, and they pop a gilf here. And let's see, on, on the darks here, already has his soul ring. And uh, on mid, Dragon Knight just his bottle and boots. His razor uh, doesn't act still doesn't have boots actually, although he can afford it. And it's relying more on his string of Basilius. And this Kunkka, let's see, yeah, he got a Claymore, so I think this, he's going for an early Shadow Blade, so... So not a hard carry here, uh, but uh, more of an that 
team fight right now and and yeah, and I think yeah, Dyer right now has a lot of team fight potential. Well, well, Radiant actually isn't so bad, especially that vacuum wall combo into the Leshrock and the Razor, and you have these heroes like the Nick, uh, like the Life Stealer, who's who can fight uh during the mid game. So now there's a pause as uh, Radiant's players are having some mouse problems. I think some of them are currently playing at playing at an internet cafe. Okay, so we'll resume the game. And right now, I'd say the advantage uh, 6 minutes in with no kills is with the uh, Radiant since they did get that uh, tier 1 tower. And I think uh, overall, they have the stronger lineup in terms of, if, if, in terms of, of going to the late game. But uh, Dyer's uh, team fight isn't to be underestimated either. And they have a lot of uh, combo spells there. Okay, so actually the dire supports are here are smoke. The next assassin and Jakiro, I think they're looking to make a go at the razor. And with unstable current not skilled, it's going to be hard. So there the Dragonite in shades. Uh, he manages to stun him. And the ice path misses, and I think that's a crucial one. But the next assassin stun hits the razor. But uh, he escapes and he uses his one charge to gain gain back some XP and the Dragonite is still chasing. And they get it with that uh breathe fire. So so nice player. Nice play there by Dyer. I think if the, I think if the Razor skilled his uh third skill since it uh applies a uh, movement slow when spells are cast, I think that might have helped. But uh, and it actually gives Bones move speed. But uh, that's a moot point, and uh, Dyer gets a uh, first blood. And then there's there's pings here. Uh, Dyer supports have rotated to to the bottom to help the Nature's Prophet. But uh, I think yeah, Radiant just backs off, and the, the strands are just uh. Walking sacks of uh, XP, as we'd like to say, uh, for for the for for the slash rack. Okay, so now uh, this Darks here uh, is halfway through his mech here. He has the headdress, and let's see if uh, this Dragonite can. I uh, know he's, he's actually one level ahead of this uh, Razor and has a uh, haste bottled. So let's see if he. Can make something out of this. He's, I think he's rotating bottom. Uh, not sure if they can get a kill on the life stealer. Does he, is he level six? No, he's just level five, so he, he doesn't have infest yet. But he'll really need. Uh, they really need to time it. But they have a lot of disables there with between the ice path and the stun. So n so now yeah, Dragonite up on the Lesh rock and uh, the Nature's Prophet uh, teleports in just to get the additional kill on the lion. And there we can go at the life stealer. Who's uh who's damage? He tries to make a go at the Jakiro, but Jakiro survives with 30 HP. So very good coordination there and uh, team fight by by the Dyer. They they get four four unanswered uh, kills right now. So the momentum definitely has swung their way right now. Has sw swung their way. And then with the Nature's Prophet there, they they can look to push or at least damage this uh tier one uh, bottom tower. But someone is uh teleporting now. Actually, it's a life stealer. Yeah, and actually, hmm, this is actually uh, quite late. Uh, Hand of Midas, uh, he's only getting the gloves of haste now, and uh, he's a uh, well, he's a few hundred XP away from uh, fr from that uh, Midas recipe. But yeah, I think instead of going that face boot, he could have gotten the the Hand of Midas early on if this was what he planned to do in the first place. Especially since it he wasn't really being contested uh, at the bottom there early on. So now Razor drops the Sentry Ward. I think that's preparation for this uh, Nyx Assassin gank. But the Nyx Assassin actually isn't level 6 yet. He he does spot an invisibility rune but doesn't opt to get it. He's not getting it. I think, yeah, they're just guarding this rune. And it's the Jakiro who who gets it. It's the Jakiro actually right now is uh, level 6. So you can look him to set up uh, that Macro Pyre combo. Okay, so so now Radiant's uh, supports are so now Radiant's uh, supports are here and uh, they 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 stun the 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 hero and uh, but the, there's a counter initiation here from the Dyer and I think they might get get this kill. No, the Razor survives. So 
So no one dies yet, uh, but this uh, Dragon Knight is in, uh, has, has dived deep and this uh, Life Steal has teleported in. And now there's a stun there from the Lion and some right clicks uh, and, and the Life Steal is making a go. And they lose the Dragon Knight uh, and there's a Lash Rock stun there and uh, they're making a go at this. And it's Assassin that didn't get a kill at the Life Stealer, uh, but, on, but you check on top, uh, this Dark Seer got a kill, I think, on the Conca, yes, and that's what happened. And yeah, and so, so that, that if uh, Dyer got three unanswered kills earlier, the same goes right now for the Radiant, so I think the momentum swung back in their favor, and that's uh, much needed levels on Radiant supports. And uh, Dyer purchases a uh, smoke right now. And uh, Dyer's just looking to defend their their tier 1 top tower. And uh, this Nature's Prophet yeah, ha has his Hand of Midas. Let's see if the Life Seed already has his. Yeah, he has his Hand of Midas. Yeah, I think it's a misplay earlier getting the face boots uh, early on. I think it's, it's if you want to feel extra safe here, I understand getting the boots first. But I don't think he needed to build it into a face boots immediately. Uh, he could have just gotten the the gloves into a uh, hand of Midas essentially since the Nature's Prophet wasn't doing much to contest him uh, during that that lane. Normally, yeah, if you get the face boots, you want to build your drums fr from there and start getting kills. And Nature's Prophet just uh, forms the the jungle camps of the well, actually the of the dire. And actually, that, that's a nice play there by the Darkseer getting the solo kill on the Konka. And the Konka actually doesn't have X mark to spot yet, so it's just the to a turret go into a ghost ship. And it's a few hundred gold away from his Shadow Blade recipe. And then in mid, yeah, looks like uh, they got a Dire, sorry for missing that kill. Dire got a kill on their Razor, and they're looking to push his tower. Uh, that's a bad teleport by the Darkseer as he walks into a to the stuns and the Darkseer gives off his life and but the supports are here but yeah I don't think there's really much they can do to contest this especially when you have this kind of lineup but the Nyx is very low and two more TPs are coming in and they're hitting just the this Dragonite illusions and uh okay so this this Jakiro yeah Ice Path uh, just delays the team and there's the night tower but for the most part I think that's a win for the Dire I mean you force that was what four teleports out of the radiant team, and that was virtually a free kill on the darks here. So you might not have gotten the the full tower gold there. You still get some gold because of the deny, uh, but uh, for the most part, yeah. I mean, radiant lost uh, 135 golds from from all those teleports at least uh, on three to four heroes, and plus that kill on the darks here. So good play there well actually it's a more of bad play on the radiant they that was a reckless teleport by the dark seer he should have just teleported to this tier 2 tower and not given up that kill at the very least and it, it could have really gone much much worse for them this nature's prophet on the dire is just uh, content to split uh, bottom and this Lesha, uh, look looks to defend it so he says earth split and uh, diabolic edict he's just actually level 5 right now so he's looking to get his level 6 and perhaps that's okay. And this uh, Nexus is now looking to gank this uh, life stealer, and there are no creeps nearby. So nice timing there with the stun and the uh, ice path. But he rages and looks like he'll manage to escape. And the lion buys him some time, and uh, he, yeah, and they just back off. So uh, good coordination there by the dire, but uh, the life stealer manages to escape. But still. It's time that he's not uh, using on his hand of Midas. So he's forced to go home. Uh, but uh, let's see if uh, the Dial can capitalize and push this tier 1 uh, top tower by the Regent. Especially with the creep wave going in their favor. Okay, so there's a teleport coming here from the Razor. Yeah, and, uh, and actually, there's an additional teleport here. So Dyer just backs off after throwing off all the teleport. And actually, one of the teleport is a. Uh, Cancelled. So despite that slow start, uh, things are he heating up here. And in terms of last hits in the nice, it's actually the life steer and the laser who's leading. 
And if you look at Nethert, yes, it's a life stealer with his hand of Midas, who's ahead of the Nethert chart. But the problem is, the next three ones are the cores of the Dire, and you have this smoke from from the Dire support. So I think uh, they're looking to gank one of these heroes, either the Darkseer or the Leshrac, or even this. Uh, well, actually, they 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 just back off. And the thing is, with this tier one mid tower down, it it's they can catch uh, heroes unawares and you always have the nearest prophet who can uh, teleport in or at very least use his rat of nature but now he just uses it to to farm or push the lane and uh, right now Dyer's making a go at this Razor he's in no man's land he's steep into the dire jungle but I think he'll eventually fall down yes and he and he he dies uh, with the kill going to the Nyx assassin so I think uh, Overextension there, but now uh, Di and Dyer's looking to get a kill on this uh, life life stealer who infests into creep to heal the damage he's taken. And uh, there's the torrent combo we we're talking about, and the Leshrac. Uh, and now they're chasing the Leshrac, but uh, this Konka is taking a lot of damage, yeah, uh, from the Leshrac's diabolic edict, and and that's th he dies. And now it's this life stealer looking to to counter initiate, but uh, they just back off, content with that uh, Konka kill. And actually, the darks here also died there. So I think overall that's a two for one trade. Two heroes died in the radiant, uh, with the dire only losing one hero. So not bad. I think uh, this is still pretty much uh anyone's game right now. So now uh, Dyer just goes back to split pushing. Well, just pushing actually. The Nature's Prophet uh, is here with the Konka, killing these creeps. Yeah, I think he would just hand of me this, this creep so that it won't do that iron shell damage. Just those tiny things that which uh, helps uh, increase the to give you that that small edge. Uh, but uh, Dyer supports are here to defend this tower, and actually they can make a go with this. And uh, the Nature's Prophet just uh, uses his Shadow Blade to move back, but in the Kanka uses uh, his boat to to zone out the the Radiant heroes and get that uh, last hit on the tower. Now there's this rotation by the Dragon Knight, and e these Dragon Knight illusions are just at bottom uh, harassing. So right now I think if we look at the gold chart, okay, sorry. While that was happening, the there's a team fight here uh, at bottom with the uh, Nyx getting a kill on the Leshrac, but uh, he dies himself as well. But they, they get killed the Darks here, and uh, they're making now go this Dragon Knight. Uh, so Dragon Knight dies, and then Shadow Blade the uh, Konga also dies as well. So overextension there by the Dire. I mean they get two kills, but uh, they lose three in return. So. Not a bad trade there for the Radiant side, so uh, saying uh, it, this, 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 uh, this fight is uh, still in anyone's game. I was about to say earlier that I think the goal was in the favor of the Dire. And yes, uh, sorry, it, it was in the favor of the Radiant and now it's swung back in favor of the Dire. I think yeah, it's slightly now going back to the Radiant but not enough. But at this point in the game, less than 1000 uh, XP isn't that much. Well, 1000 gold isn't that much and in terms of XP, uh, the Dire was leading, but because of that overextension, uh, they lost more than 2,000 XP to to the Radiant, and Nishu's Prophet doesn't get the tower kill, and then it's denied by this uh, Dark Seer. So, interesting enough, two of the Radiant's towers have been denied, but they they did, they did get the last hit on this uh, tier one top tower. Still, uh, Radiant's losing map control, and if you look at the wards, yeah, it's just this uh. Yeah, no wards in play right now, and it's night time. So heroes are actually very vulnerable with no one with vision, and Dyer's looking to take advantage of that with his smoke gang, and they find this dark seer, and there's an ice path and a stun, and uh, and a uh, boat here coming from the Konka who who hits it. So that's two kills unanswered right now. But uh, the rest of Radiant team uh, comes here. The life steer is hunting the Nyx assassin, and gets the kill. Uh, but they might get this Konka gets the kill on the. Leshrac, but uh, he gets finished off by the Razor and this Life Stealer. So Ice Path tries to stall the Razor there, and uh, 
it's like this the hero is down to 20 life let's see if he'll get away no he doesn't get away and gets killed by the razor so that was actually nice initiation by the dire but a uh, tiny tps in by the radiant and gets the kill uh gets three kills there so now uh radiant just goes back to defend their their tier two top tower and right now it's really still anyone's game it comes down to this, uh, this uh, team fight yeah and I wouldn't call the last fight an overextension it's really just good rotation by the Radiant and let's see uh, the Ninja Prophet yeah, just uses his ulti to push the lane it, I mean damages the lion but doesn't really secure a kill and I think that's one thing you should as a Ninja Prophet you should Actually, be careful. Uh, while it's tempting to use your ultimate as a farming tool, uh, normally you want to save it to get the kills on uh, heroes, or at least uh, damage them when they're uh, pushing the lane. In terms of items, yeah, this cook has been sitting on this shadow blade uh, face boots. Dark Seer, does he have the mech? Actually, he almost has the neck. Just looking for the recipe, and this uh, life tier just uh, backing off. And then I think there's going to be some dewarding action here. No. No dewarding, but it the ward spotted. Okay, so here comes the dewarding by the dire. As they did did spot this uh newly planted uh observer ward. Yeah. Or no sorry, that was their observer ward. That's that's still fresh. And looks like this life steers making go this nature's prophet who just uh sprouts and uh TPs out of there. Very vi uh, very viable since the life steer doesn't have a disable yet, and now th this invisible next assassin is looking to hunt this uh bottom uh, area, but a uh, radiant uh just backs off, and now they're looking to make go to this tower. And I'm sure if they can do so, so this la so uh, an ice path, but uh, more TBs are coming in. There's a nice stun by the Nyx Assassin. Actually, they get a kill. Ni nice boat there. Actually, two of the Radiant heroes die. And but this uh, Life Seer is looking to turn things around, and they're being chased by this uh, Razor. Life Seer gets the kill on the Nyx Assassin. Let's see if he can get more. Uh, they quickly evaporate the Razor thanks to that uh, Flame Breath. Uh, but the uh, Life Seer gets another kill on the Jakiro. But uh, but this Dragonite looks to retaliate on this Life Seer, but I don't think he can get it. Uh, and now this uh, life steer just pops his rage, but the nature prophet TP's in. So and uh, the slasher rock is coming in. Yeah, but that was a bad uh, teleport. You teleported into the stun by the dragonite, and and now uh, that's a nice uh, torrent by the Konka, but uh, front hit misses the lion. So overall, I think that's a win for the dire. I mean, you killed four heroes while losing two of your, two of your supports, and then. So TP in by the Leshrak, so get that extra kill, and you force the TBs out of the Radiant. So you may not have gotten the tower, but uh, you did force uh, out all those TPs and uh, those extra uh, tower kills. So I think, yeah, lately we've been seeing some sloppy TPs to defend by the Radiant. Uh, I mean, earlier there was a TP by the Darkshare, and now it was a uh, TP by the Leshrak. And while that was happening, actually, Dire Creeps pushed this tier to bottom tower. But the Rage is still definitely in this game, and let's see if the Darks here, yeah, still... He re he's still lacking the recipe for this uh, Mechanasm. This Life Steer on the hand, ha on their hand has the Armlet and actually has a Hyper Stone and a Basher. So Nature's Prophet won't be as a... Won't be able to TP if he gets a Lucky Bash. And this Nature's Prophet, uh, yeah, just has his Hand of Midas and Shadow Blade. And now this Dragonite's looking for another kill. He actually is farmed his BKB and actually not going for the Shadow Blade build. And the the Jakiro is pretty much in the same state in terms of the mechanism as the Dark Seer. Which is uh very which is uh no, which is good right now for the dire considering that the Dark Seer should be getting more farm than this uh support uh Jakiro. So now uh Dyer's peeing uh Roshan, I think they're looking to make a go at him. So yes, uh, they're making a go at him, and I don't think Radiant really has vision of this. And with their uh, tier 1 towers down, they, there's no place for really for them to teleport and contest this. So now they're just uh, damaging the 
damaging the tower uh, and hitting a uh, disruption. So now I think Raiden uh, is suspecting this is happening, but it's three really too late. Konka picks up the Konka picks up the Aegis and let's see uh, if they can make something out of this uh, Aegis. And if you look at the uh, Radiant Jungle, the vision really is favoring the the Dire, and they even drop Senti Ward just to make sure. And now this Nature's Prophet is looking to push this tier to uh, bottom tower. And yeah, and considering the earlier team fight here between the the Dragonite and Nature's Prophet and the Illusions, yeah, they easily get this uh, tier two bottom tower killed. And let's see if they decide to use this to push into the tier three. We have this next Assassin Invisible. And ready to find some any picks off that uh, that strays, but Radiant just uh, hugs her tower while these Dragonite illusions uh, just harasses this tower a bit. And now Dire backs off, and I think they're pinging this um, tier two mid tower. And while that's happening, yeah, this the top lane uh, is pushing. Right now, I think that uh, Dyer has this slight advantage, and if you look at the XP chart, yeah, Dyer has uh, this 3,500 XP advantage, and in terms of gold, yeah, it's a uh, it's almost 7,500 the gold advantage. I think these are ex best expressed by by towers taken. Radiant has only taken the tier one tower, the bottom tier one tower of the Dyer, for example. So right now, uh, Dyer also has that Roshan advantage because they still have their tier 1 towers well their tier 1 mid tower that is so what was happening actually the nature's prophet actually pawns the the leshrak and this life here was when he go at the conca but he just uh, teleports out of there sorry uh, at the dragonite but he just tel teleports out of there and now uh dire just looks to push this Tier two tower, tier two mid tower. Yeah, and, and there's a torrent, but it misses anyone. The life there is looking to chase them. Does he have a uh, drums? No. Uh, he just uh, slows this uh, this next assassin in an ice path to zone out the enemy, and uh, both are thrown in for good measure. Okay, so looks like there uh, there might be a prolonged clash here at mid. I don't think they're aware yet of this invisible conca, but yeah, he just backs off and looks to grab this uh double damage rune. Is he getting it or is he saving it for his uh mid dragon knight? He's just uh, saving it for for the dragon knight to pick up. And it's nature's profit uh just being annoying by split pushing bottom. So right now, yeah. Map control advantage definitely in, inside Dire and in, in look at the map, the vision is all there so with these uh, sentry wards and observer ward placements. And uh, of and because of all the, those towers uh, taken, uh, Radiant also has lost a lot of their map control. But still, all it takes really is just an overextension by the Dire and, and Radiant is back in, in this game. And perhaps the problem really now is how how do you take a uh, tier 3 tower? So now Dragon Knight um, finds this uh, Dark Seer, and I think if they might uh, get the kill with combined with Jakiro. So they get the kill, but this uh, Dragon Knight is hex, and this Razor is stealing all his uh, damage. And actually, they get the kill on the they, they get actually they get the kill on the supports and the Dragon Knight. And this uh, Nature's Prophet just backs off with the Shadow Blade. So yeah, we're talking about overextension. So that's an overextension. I mean, you did kill. Uh, the the off the off lane darks here in the less rack, but you also lost your two supports and your mid hero in return. And first, the only thing going for here is that this Nature's Prophet has been sp split pushing this entire time, yeah, and just actually doesn't do much much damage to this uh dirty tower. And now this uh Kong is making a go at this uh life stealer, but uh life stealer just retaliates and pops pops the ages. And uh, Nature's Prophet goes in, will he use Sprout? No, he doesn't have mana yet for the Sprout, he has it now. And they're looking to make it go at him. And said the 
lions stun misses everyone but it, it does create space for this life tier to escape yeah and so nice play there by the radiant i mean they pop the ages on the Konka who arguably overextend i mean he can't really take fights against the life stealer and that's the problem right now we're talking about i mean Konka he's a good mid hero but as a hard carry not really the, the strongest of hard carries and he really needs farm right now uh, he, he wants a Daedalus so that for that lucky prox for Tidebringer. And and Radiant uh, just denies their tier 2 towers, yeah. So I think that's a third uh, tower deny right now by the Radiant. And if if they can stall the game for like 15 to 20 more minutes, I think they can... They can uh, definitely win this uh, win this game or take take this game. So now uh, there's pinks at mid, and I think uh, Radiant's looking to take down this t uh, tier one mid tower, and I don't think the Dire can really defend it, especially with the flash shot cut coming in and the diabolic edict. They pop a gilf and dice boat immediately evaporates the the flash rock, and actually they get a kill on that uh, lion, and the dark Seer also falls down. They get a kill on the Nyx assassin, but uh. They're, they're, they're getting a lot of kills and now they're making a go uh, Radiant's making a go at the Dragonite with the Life Stealer there and ma now making a go at this uh, yeah the Dark Seer dies again and there's another buyback by the Dragonite and this Life Stealer is the real hero here kills the Nyx Assassin kills the tower and uh, kills also the kills also the, J the Jakiro and I think he can also get this kill on this Konka if he didn't uh, use invisibility instead this Life Stealer is now Doing some armor toggling and killing the Dragon Knight, but now they're making a go at him, and and now Dire finally gets the kill on that Life Stealer. So that's a big um, messy team fight actually, and they get a lot of that's a thousand gold for killing that uh, for ending the Life Stealer's uh, kill streak, and he buys back in this game, wanting to prevent this push by by the Dire. So a lot of buybacks uh, during that big team fight, and I think the question really here is is the Life Stealer will he be in the team fights to secure the kills I mean his rage and his right clicks actually been doing the most damage and he's actually now level 21 so that explains his capability and, and that's way ahead of well look look at the Konka the carry is just level 15 Dragon Knight is just level 17 it's a big gap to this uh, life stealer level 21 and that's the effect of the hand of Midas plus that early kills he, he's been getting yeah, and look at support, they're just level 11, so... Okay, there's an accidental BKB used there by the Konka, so... Totally unnecessarily, and it might cost them the game uh, later on. And I'm saying, yeah, if... If Radiant just hangs back and stalls the game, I think it might swing in their advantage. I, I think, yeah, right now we're seeing the power of the Life Stealer, who's, who's a better hard carry, and it's not just because of the farm he's getting. The... You can also look to this uh, Razor, who's actually, I think he's building his Agonyms, if I'm not mistaken. He already has his uh, Yasha. Perhaps the only one to turn around this game right is a Nature's Prophet. Uh, he has this uh, Desolator. And I'm not a big fan of the Necronomicon, it, it does help push. But you're also in a, you're fighting a team with the Hand of Midas, and they can just easily Hand of Midas the... Necro units at this well if they're they actually save it and it doesn't proc the the damage by killing the Necro units and, and that's why you don't see this Necro potent uh sorry this Necronomicon on in much pro games the problem is uh, it can also be countered by a Helm of Dominator although it doesn't seem like anyone's getting a Helm of Dominator uh, Darkseer actually has his mechanism now let's see if the Jakir also has his mech yeah he also has his mech and ready about the Ghost Scepter will help against the Life Stealer right clicks so I think we're in for a uh, lengthy game here as a uh, Dire m m might find pushing into this tier 3 towers a bit difficult and I think that that's the problem here. I mean, they were successful in destroying all the tier 2 towers, but where do you go from here? Breaking into the tier 3 really is uh, 
the question. Uh, you do still have a Nature's Prophet, but he hasn't be had the opportunity to split push as of late. And now this uh, Life Slayer is making a go at him, but he just Shadow Blade. So now actually a lot of these heroes have been escaping because of the Shadow Blade. I think, yeah, Radiant needs either to invest in Dust or Wards. And once they get, get one of those two, or even a gem, and once they get one of those two objects, I think uh, they'll be getting more kills. And now Dyer is just pinging Roshan. And they're looking to make a go at, at Roshan. And let's see if Radiant detects this. I don't think... Uh, they might suspect it, but they haven't really... Yeah, uh, well, they don't they don't see it, so... Looks like this Roshan will be uncontested. Yeah, and they bring him down. And let's see who picks up the Aegis. It's the Conquer again who gets the Aegis, and he... He now has his uh, Crystallis actually. Still, uh, this is a relatively poor Konka. It's just a uh, fifth in terms of farm. It's actually the Nature's Prophet who's on the lead farmer for the Dire side, followed by the Dragon Knight. And the Radiant team, yeah, it's this uh, Razor who gets the Aghanim. So this will help him push towers, and actually, if he gets a refresher, it will do an ab absurd uh, pushing damage. But I don't think yeah he spots this nature's prophet. But again, with the shadow, w with the shadow blade, unless they have a sentry or a wards that sen with sentry wards or dust, they can't be capitalized out on a kill. And you know when you have heroes like the next assassin, the Konka, who can turn invisible, you really want to invest. So now, uh, yeah, the the life here makes a go at the nature's prophet by saying. The sword vision or those dust without them, you can't really kill these heroes unless they, they, they recklessly dive your towers, which will give a uh, vision or have detection. And now, this Dragonite Illusion just harasses the Nyx Assassin. So now, Dyer's looking to push, but I don't think they can really break this. Oh, okay, sorry, while that was happening, actually, it was all just a mere distraction. The the dire creeps manages to take completely take take this uh tier three tower and racks, and they kill this uh Nyx assassin with that uh with that lion ulti, this finger of death. Finger of death, of course, taken from from the D and D spellbook. That's where you, you get its name. Uh, but and. Uh, this life steer making a go this nature's prophet and this time he doesn't it's not really able to teleport out of time and yeah we're talking about the vision the life steer finally buys a, a gem so that enabled him to get that kill on the nature's prophet a bit too late if you ask me you could have gotten it before this uh, tier 3 tower died and they lost their racks but but they're doing what they need to do and actually uh it's the fourth power deny so they deny their uh, radiant denies their their own tier three tower. And perhaps the only good news right now for the dyers that uh, they still have their ages. So this is a scary lineup, and uh, and finally uh, we have some sentry wards being dropped, and and let's see if they can ca capitalize uh, on this with the nature's prophet being down. The darks here. Won't be in team fight. He's just defending bottom, and now this life steer makes a go at this uh, Jakiro. Uses his uh, go scepter to escape the life steer, but this razor continues to chase, and and I think this is an overextension. The yeah overextension, and the Konka manages to escape, and this next assassin gets the kill on the lion, but they do get the kill on the tower. So support for a tier two tower. Uh, not so bad, but this Nature's Prophet immediately teleports to the bottom and goes for the split push. And without a tower there, yeah. Let's see if our... Ra well, Radiant have teleported back to base. So it's it's going to be hard actually for, for Radiant to leave their base, especially with uh, with no tier 3 tower and their, and their bottom lane be con constantly being pushed. 
Yeah, and I think Dyer can, can win this game through sheer uh, split push. And now there's a smoke coming from them looking to find a pick off. They spot the life stealer. Let's see if they make a go. Uh, he pops off the rage in time. Uh, and there's, that's a nice uh, stun by the Leshrak, and, but the Nature's Prophet comes in and uh, kills the Leshrak that was just four right clicks and now they're making a go at this Life Stealer. There's a Razor and ni ni nice stun, so they finally get the Life Stealer and yeah, and actually they haven't lost anyone yet and the gem is dropped, that's a big thing. And uh, it also forced the buyback on the Life Stealer, so another hero dies on the alien and I think this is uh, GG. I think they can break this tower and there's another buyback there. Uh, and I think Dyer should just focus on their objective and focus on these racks. The life stealer comes in, uh, yeah, but there's a shadow blade and the tower falls down. Uh, they, they finally get their first kill of this team fight on the next assassin, who actually buys back. I don't think if that's necessarily, but uh, okay, I think they might have gotten back the gem. Yeah, they looks like they got back the gem. I think. Mm, yeah, it's on the razor. So that's how they killed the nation's prophet. But the important thing there is they got the top uh, mi midi barracks and and Dai really forced a lot of buybacks on the side of the Radiant. So yeah, I think uh, the teams can just stall this game here right now. And hopefully, actually, hopefully the game ends in the next 15 minutes as we still have another game after this one. Again, uh, this is the. If you're just tuning in, thank you for watching. This is the Jetto Cup group stages, and we have Team Null Victory ver fighting Friends and Paulos. We actually started the game late, uh, and and now uh, Radiant's uh, looking to push, capitalizing on that Nature's Prophet uh, death. But but their lanes are being constantly pushed, so this is a four versus five fight. If it does, I mean, this Dark Series just at base defending, defending. They've already lost three of their racks. And let's see, uh, now they're making a go at this tower and that uh, Razor OD damages the, the tower quickly. They should, they could actually have spent the guild but they don't do so. So their tower falls down and uh, the Dark Shirt comes in so that's a nice uh, wall uh, and uh, they're, they're making a go. Uh, they might, they kill, they kill the Leshrak and uh, this Razor might fall down. One, two, yeah they get a kill on this. Uh, on the, no, actually the Razor still survives and actually this is a massacre on the Dyer. They lose the, both the Konka and the, and the Jakiro during the team fight and now it, it forces a buyback. This Life Stealer is just uh, hitting the mid racks, but this Dragonite is, is hitting back on him. And uh, I think that that might be enough. Uh, X marks the spot doesn't work on the Life Stealer because he was rage up and this Konka is uh, just right clicking this Life Stealer, but this Life Stealer with a uh, very tough and but they eventually get the kill on him so over extension there the life seer should have just back off especially when since his allies already left and this nature's prophet just co continue to be annoying it's already pushing these tier 4 towers and it's, uh, just uh, right clicking this razor to death yeah and he finally falls down he should uh he picks up the gem yeah that's what he should have done and now make uh hitting these uh tier 4 towers but the uh, Darkseer comes in, he does a vacuum, and the Nature's Prophet just uh, uses his uh, uh, just uh, Shadow Blades out of there, especially since the gem is on him. But now they continue, so the Sprout and some right clicks, uh, right click and a stun, okay, and Radiant team uh, calls GG, so good play there from from the Dire. They maximized their abilities and, and made the most out of, out of that uh, game. And again, thank you for watching. This is your caster, Charles Stan, for the evening. And these are the group stages of the Jetto Cup. And our winners are Friends and Paolo. So, good game, well played on their part. And uh, good night.